We are moving on to custom cabinet UCS attributes part two. Um, we're going to start, start by talking about connectors. So if you go into a cabinet or assembly, um, I just put a panel on the front of this by going into the section editor, choosing panel. Then go to face planner end and select that panel. And you have connectors here. Um, T2 suspension is how we would usually do this type of connect. See what happens right away when you choose that. Um, or I'm sorry, T2 push pull. You can see what happens right away when we, we select that. It puts in the Kiku clip and it's going to drill the holes for those in the correct locations and they can just apply the hardware and uh, it'll fit perfectly. There is also Kiku suspension like I showed you um, that works the same way. It just lifts up instead of out. So you may have instances where you'd want to use that instead. If you continue through the connector options, you'll see Z clip. If you have something that's the correct space, quarter inch behind this panel, um, the Z clip should fire. Like so. See them here, 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 and here. And then the last one is the star hanger. And it works like so, where it'll do the machining into this front panel, and then it will also do the machining into the panel right behind so that your star hanger can uh, wedge in there and then pop into this front panel so they're located correctly and you can uh, just add the hardware so those are the different types of uh, connectors they're all pretty much for adding machining in the correct way to use to use that piece of hardware um, one thing to keep in mind is there's multiple different attributes here for moving those around. And uh, so be sure you go in, place each one of those and use these to figure out, you know, how to move those in different manners in case you come across those within a job. But literally each one of these has these different options that are specific to that type of hardware. So throw those in place and then just adjust these uh, to see how they work so that you're familiarize yourself um, with using those different pieces of hardware. Okay, since we're on a panel, we'll also uh, do panel adjust. You can turn that on and you can see it pulls up um, multiple different options here. This is an extend. So for the bottom left, right, and top. So what that does is it extends this at the time of cutting, but not in your model. So cut this out and it was extended five inches to the left and 10 to the right. Um, this panel would actually be 15 inches larger than, than is shown visually in your model. You can also do that top and bottom, like I said. Um, you can miter the panel. It comes in as auto. So if it butts into another panel, it'll automatically miter it um, with a 45 degree miter. But you can also just tell it to do that. Like so. And you can also adjust the face of the laminate only. 
Um, this really is for solid surface panels, but it, it works for any panel. Um, we have some solid surface panels that have that the solid surface is set as the laminate, and then the core is set as particle board. And so, if you needed to have a solid surface overhang past the particle board, you could use these, and it would adjust uh, correctly. Next up is miter fold. Um, so on the panel, it's just literally mitering that. So it's making a miter cut. And then you can also use miter fold, which will actually fold the material down. So you can select pretty much any part and apply a miter fold. Um, you just choose your edge and put the angle you want to achieve. And then you can tell it how far down to, to fold that. And then we can take a look inside there and see, you know, that that part is folded down um, and it will cut the full piece and then they'll take that to the miter fold machine cut the miter into it and fold it. So it'll do the math for you to create this piece. Um, you can do that for any of the edges. And there's some other uh, attributes in here as well. You can add some extra extension and uh, separate that part. If, it, if it's that part's not going to fit on the sheet, you can turn that into a separate part. Um, it's set to do that automatically, but um, you can also say yes or no. All right, false front backer, pretty quick and easy one here. Any top front stretcher has the attribute to turn it into a false front backer. Um, it's made for false fronts, but anytime you'd want to turn that stretcher to vertical, it's just an easy way to do it. Um, so it's just always there for um, front stretchers. Shelf standards, um, while we're in here, we'll apply it individually. So if you had the old school metal standards with little uh, clips that attach into that standard, you can come in here and enable this and it will machine for that piece. You do have to do it to each side individually. But if your whole job was set up that way, you also have the, the option to do that to the whole job. So you could come out here and turn on shelf standards. And then all sides in that job will have it turned on. Sex bolts, um, you'll see there's no cabinet on this side, but there is a cabinet on this side. So it's pre-drilled um, pre for sex bolts, top and bottom, front and back. If you click on that at, uh, end, you can see they're called connecting screws, and you have the ability to um, just let them be automatic, enable them or disable them. Um, disable just the front or just the back and then you can adjust them to different dimensions if you needed to. Um, the biggest thing with these is if you disable them, remember that they're firing into the cabinet next to it so the hole is still going to be there unless you leave that cabinet and also disable it on the end that would be butting into that end that you just disabled it on. Once you do that, they go away. And they'll go away on both cabinets.
play around with those and make sure you check out the other options for connecting screws. Um, and, and, and mess around with the adjustments that are in here. Last thing we're going to take a look at is light balance. Um, you have the option of going into a cabinet. Once you go into the cabinet, you have the option of light balance integral, and you can tell it what type to use here, um, horizontal grain or vertical. Now remember, you have to go into assembly case and set the bottom scribe. Whatever you set that to, it will add the light a light balance. Um, but that's built into one single cabinet. So really, that's very uncommon. What's more common is to set this back to, to how it was initially. Um, go out to the room. And at the room level, you have a light balance here. You can set that for the full room. And then if you go look in 3D, you can take a look at this here and see that it's set up every non-finished end and the bottom, that dimension that you typed in for that, that whole row of cabinets, which is how we would do this almost 90% of the time. And then we would send a light balance piece to go under there. Um, you'll have to go to the object library um, to find that. And you just bring that piece in like so and place it. And remember, it's actually placing it right underneath the cabinet. So that way you can select it. Now, the part itself is inset up underneath the cabinet. But in order to access the part, the placement is right below the cabinet. Um, and then you can literally just stretch this to what it needs to be. And we can look back in 3D, take a look under there, and see that that light balance piece is put in place. Um, it also notes it on your drawing for you. We'll take a look at a couple more attributes in part three. But that's it for part two.